I have elephant ear problems. If you look back here, they look relatively nice, right? They don't look like they have any issues. There's multiple plants here. It's growing nicely. I've got my nice ground cover here. Everything looks good, right? But if you follow my channel and you see my previous elephant ear videos, here's one linked here, you'll see or you might notice a difference. These plants are much smaller than they used to be. Let's talk about that and see what I did wrong so hopefully you don't make the same mistake. So first, let's talk about what I did correctly, what actually worked well, and then we'll get to what I did wrong. So I really like the way I added the ground cover here. You see my Swedish ivy here, which is growing for most of my ground cover and the main intention here. Now I also, just because I needed space and because this provides good cover from the sun, I planted a couple donkey ears here. There's one over here, one over here. You can see that in a video that you I'll have linked above. And then I also have a donkey tail over here, just seeing how it would do. Just took a cutting and put it in the ground and it did very well. But my main point of the ground cover here was my Swedish ivy. And as you see, it is actually absolutely taken off. This was actually only from three cuttings about that big. And in the entire season, uh, growing season here, just for this uh, spring to summer, and now getting close to fall, it completely covered this entire area. It really took off. I definitely would suggest using this Swedish ivy as a ground cover um, if you're in a warm enough climate where it won't die off in the winter. Um, I really do love the way it looked. I did not expect it to take off as much as it did, and I'm probably gonna use it elsewhere. And I've actually already planted some in my front garden bed in front of my house as well because of how much I like it. And so now in the next few weeks, I'll be taking the donkey ears and the tails out because this is not a permanent home for them. I need to make sure larger plants like the donkey ear do not take over from where the elephant ear is growing. But this nice ground cover here for the Swedish ivy will not. It'll just make the whole space look that much nicer as you see now. So the problem or the issue that I've come across and the reason why these elephant ears look so small is from how I overwinterize them or how, how I winterize them, getting them ready for the winter last winter. Um, everybody has always told me and uh, to cut the elephant ears um, to the base or to basically to soil level and then they'll grow back. So in the past, I've always left about, I don't know, four to six inches above and um, cut them there instead and let them keep on going back out instead of at soil level. And last year, I went ahead and put it all the way down to soil level um, because that's what I've always been told um, worked the best. So I hadn't tried that yet, so I wanted to do that. And what we have here is that all these plants are now basically acting as first-year plants because I cut them so low, I actually and I'll show you here in a second, it, the plant actually died back from that point. When I cut it down that low, I, in effect, killed that, that main trunk of the plant. And now the only plants that are coming up are actually from new pups that started growing out from the base, out from the roots, or out from the ground around where my previous plants were. So now all of these plants are first-year plants instead of second, three, fourth, older than that on some of them. Um, if you remember on one of my videos last year, my plant over here that this plant actually received was probably four or five, six years old. It was really old and it produced a huge amount of leaves. It was so big that I would have leaves coming out all the way over here, way pressed against here and a decent amount larger. But now it has reverted to basically a first year plant, which is why all these are smaller. So if you look right here, you can see basically what I did is when I cut this down right here, I cut it down to the base. Now, the ground level was a little bit higher previously. It, you know, sinks down. You got to add more mulch and dirt um, later on. But what happened was instead, in the previous years where I would have my growth coming out of the top here, I cut it so low, this scabbed over and the plant could not regrow from this point. Therefore, I have it growing from the sides all the way around in this big dead spot right here in the middle. Same thing right here. You can see the same thing. I've got all these little ones. These were all from last year. All completely new dead spots here. These are all the ones that I cut last year, last fall. And no, none of these plants actually came back. Instead, we have the pups from the outside here as the ones that come up. 
And now these, as you see, are brand new, basically first year plants. And you see even the diameter here is so much smaller than these were from the previous year. These were two year plants. And so you see this is about half the size. And so I really do basically have a full crop of first year plants now. And here again, the same example where I cut back not a single one. I didn't have a single one on any of these actually take. All of these where I cut them back, I cut them too far down and the elephant deer plant itself here from that trunk completely died and I have a brand new plant here, brand new plant, brand new plant all the way around. So no, I didn't kill my elephant deers, but I basically killed the multi-year old plants and now I have all these brand new plants coming up. They're not hardly as tall, they're not as big, not as many leaves, not as healthy all first year plants, which is honestly very depressing. And if you look at it, I have these big, huge trunks here that are just sitting. Honestly, they're just ugly, just sitting here. And I'm hoping that the ground cover, adding more uh, soil and mulch will eventually make these um, where you can't see them and these will start to take over. But that was definitely a huge mistake that I really hope nobody else makes. Now, when thinking about this mistake that I made, I honestly don't know why it happened. I don't know why I would think to change the way I've done things. Really, I think I can have a little bit of OCD. And in the winter, when you have the plant die back from the first frost or when it gets too cold, it all limps down. I like to make everything as pretty as possible. And so I think I just wanted a better way to just clear it all out and make it look pretty through the fall. So when people came over, they didn't just see dead plants hanging about. But I think that's my biggest mistake. I, I really should not have done that. These plants do not look anything like they did last year. And then I started thinking about this. These grow very similar to my banana trees, and I don't cut those back. When the banana trees die back, I basically just leave them there completely. I'll cut the leaves off. So here, I'll cut these leaves off when they die back, but I never touch the trunk. And that trunk, it gets you know larger and larger. But at that point, the new plant, oh, that same plant continues to grow from that trunk the next year and then the plants get bigger and taller and that would be nice if I could do the same thing because as my Swedish ivy starts growing more and more and starts really taking over this whole bottom would be very lush and green my elephant ears will start being taller and taller until they're you know hopefully multi uh, multiple feet tall and it's completely taken over and it'll look very tropical and lush so I'm not sure what led me to do that it was definitely a mistake that I'm not going to make again so as a quick look to the banana tree to show you just what I was talking about, you can see here where the old husk here and the old trunk was from last year, and the plant basically started regrowing from this point right here. I didn't cut any of this back. Some of this husk has fallen off, and I've trimmed some of it, and whenever the first frost comes, I'll, have to cut, I'll cut some of these leaves off, but I won't touch the husk here. I'll let it stay basically looking dead completely, just like this. All this will come back. It'll get a little bit soft and mushy, but that's fine. The elephant ears will do the same exact thing, but I'm just going to leave it just like this. just like I have um, for these, uh, for the banana trees every time. And then the new, uh, the next year in the spring, the banana tree will start growing from the middle core here of the tree and it'll keep on getting bigger and bigger. And that's how these will then eventually be able to produce fruit because they don't just start over every year. And we did have fruit uh, bananas last year, but none this year, sadly. But this is what we need to do for our elephant ears and what I will continue to do. So you should probably like this video and subscribe to this channel to make sure you see how much larger these elephant ears are next year because they will definitely be a lot bigger because I'm not gonna make this mistake again. Even I, if I have to rewatch my video to remind me, don't be dumb. Don't cut the elephant ears to the very bottom. We want these to be as large, as lush as possible. Definitely a mistake I should not have made, and I won't again. Thank you all for joining me for another video. I do hope you enjoyed this. This is a very important lesson that I hope a lot of people uh, take something from, and hopefully you don't have these same mistakes. Like always, and like I mentioned before, please hit the like button notification bell and comment if you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about in the video and if you have any suggestions for any other videos please let me know thank you all for watching and have a great day
now. Yes. 